get me the required amount. We go in quiet and go out with a boom. So hi guys. Um let's just have Bane talk a little more. Alright, so today I'm gonna talk about payday two and the community itself okay, and what we can do to fun. help improve it. Now there's many problems with the community on PS4 I have in my personal opinion because when people in the community do things wrong it affects everyone else because this is a team based game like sure you can uh, bring up your team with your skills too but it does suck running with a slightly less capable team let's say so first thing most people know I got corrupted and it, although I'm back to infamy 1 I used to be infamy 5 but I know what I'm talking about because I consider myself on the payday elite. Only have two trophies to go, which is one doing all death, doing all missions on Death Wish, and the second one is doing Hotline Miami with uh, each crew member using one of the four masks. Now, first problem that's a really big issue: people doing the same actions on the same object. For example, lock picking. This is a really big issue. When someone lock picks a door. Someone else lock picks at the exact same time for no reason whatsoever. The problem with this in the community is you're wasting time and it's really, really dumb. People, it doesn't make a difference if two people lock pick the same door, it doesn't make it any faster. Uh, so don't do it. Don't uh, the only that. exception Everybody where I'd see this okay. is where if someone with more skill with a proficiency, like for example, lock picking, if someone's running a ghost build, then they start lockpicking after you, then fair enough to them, because they'll beat you to it, probably. Uh, let's go with something else. Uh... Medkits, mini medkits. Mini medkits are a very big problem. Because... I see loads of Infamy 5s not placing mini medkits and being selfish. Being selfish in a team-based game does not help you, it jeopardizes you, right? So, if you have ammo bags, medkits, mini medkits, whatever it is, you place it, as it helps your team. So, if you have equipment and you're only using it to yourself, just remember that you're not just helping yourself, you can help others too if you give them to others like sure it may be a drag let's say if you have someone who's always constantly taking health damage then yeah fair enough but it gets really bad when for example a mastermind who's carrying the team who always is inspire especially on death wish doesn't have health because they can't do what they're trying to do which is save the team from getting all down they're keeping each other in the game so if you have ma mini med kits ammo doctor bags use them place them down put them in a good place so people don't get shot just keep conscious of that key card duplicating is another thing that's in this still if people have key cards what you really want to do is leave them for the first part of the game if you know no one in the game is communicating fine but in Hawks and Breakout, for example, it's a very good example that you can see that there's only generally two to three key cards, and you can make that amount go to 12 key cards if everyone in the game communicates when to pick up the key cards at the exact same time. Uh, we got two more. Yeah. Unless you know people aren't key card duplicating, don't bother wasting your time by just picking them up. Because remember, if you help your crew out, they're going to help you back in return, basically. Having more people means more enemies dead, really, and that's better. Sure, there's infinite respawning. The less on the map at a time, the better. Especially with things like specials, like bulldozers. Listening is another issue. If you call someone and they don't listen, now this can be important in submissions because, for example, in stealth, although you can't call people, you could like melee them, for example, or shoot them with a silenced pistol uh, to convey their attention. To say, ah, oh, uh, look, come over here, do this, whatever. 
uh, because you might want your team to move in a specific unit and you might want them to pick up a key card for example for whatever reason so uh people keep your game volume on if you can it really helps the rest of us out oh dear this one i hate people killing civilians or dominated hostages it's really irritating some people use mastermind builds like myself and when we're using things like hostage taker it really really helps us out if you keep them alive because we get two percent health bonus every single five seconds there are which kind of helps just a bit and you can use your the hostage to get other people out of custody not only that but they help you all the time because they can be jokered if someone has the right skills and you don't actually get gain anything from killing them an extra kill on the leaderboard is that really it as long as your contribution was seen then it's fine if you just go around killing guards all the time sure that helps but what's more important getting out of the mission by moving the bags or just killing cops with no real intention yeah oh dear people not knowing what to do in missions and then thinking they have a good idea of doing what they want don't do this the worst example of this is big oil there's 12 engines i believe do not just pick up a random engine if someone knows how to do it you're gonna be there a long long time there's ways to figure these things out if you don't know look up a youtube video or just let the person who's more capable than you doing it if you don't know then fair enough all of you can take an engine each see how that goes for you but there's ways to do these heists and i suggest you follow them when you join a game mid-match for example if everyone has stealth gear everyone's using ecms and you can hear in the background that they're trying to stay quiet and loud hasn't been engaged yet put on an ecm and silenced weapons there's only a very few cases where you wouldn't do this but what you want to do is follow the crew for example on shadow raid this is the worst example on shadow raid you never want to come with heavy armor i see people join my games i see infamy fives join my game with heavy armor they don't shoot they just move bags which is fair enough but why in heavy armor Th there was no reason at all so uh fix that go with the crew unless you are trying to contrast the crew which is another thing you can do for example, if you are doing framing frame, three people have ECMs. How about you come with ammo bags, for example, and a saw. You can just stay put while they do the mission. If it goes wrong, then they've got a powerhouse, that's you. You can saw open those painting holders and get out there much quicker than waiting for the barriers to come down. Being a team game, don't key card hog. Hoxton breakout, big, big example. Thing I see all the time people wanting to keep their key card for that last door. It doesn't help. It doesn't matter who has the key card for the door. Just use your key cards at some point. It's not like some sort of godsend ability that you need to have the whole time. Don't place pointless drills. Just don't do it. For example, server, Hawks and Breakout. There are six doors. I see people placing drills for no reason. You can actually see the server already inside and it creates more noise and more effort really because you might not be able to hear a cloaker sound or perhaps someone might be repairing the drill because they have OCD. And then they'll get knocked down by a cloaker. So don't do that. If you host a lobby. Don't start the game instantly as someone joins. What you want to do is wait till they're ready. Because people have multiple belie builds believe it or not. So let them have time to switch through it. It really helps people out. And it will help you out. Because helping your team helps you. Uh, Shadow Rage shenanigans. I've already been over that. Just don't come with heavy armor to Shadow Raid. 
or non-silenced guns unless it's for detection purposes like Moscone doesn't help if you need help with a mission message your host or someone because there's no point in lying like complete silence who bullshitted about being an infamy 5 when he thought you could do hocks and break out stealth yeah I was astounded and then he asked the difference between using the rattlesnake and the nagant he thought the rattlesnake was better Haiti rounds and grenades never use a grenade around someone who has less than 10% health they will die and don't throw it at them like maybe in stealth it's funny because you can just re revive people and it might not have a big impact on them but don't throw grenades and use HT rounds on people with low health. Sure, you might have to use it to stun a bulldozer, but be careful about the people around you. I've seen too many Infamy 5 trash players hogging their med kits when someone could use them and then just blowing them up with grenades. It doesn't help you. You've been a troll to the community on a team based game. You've achieved nothing. Well done for having no life. And. If you think you're cool by kicking people at the end of a mission, the joke's on you because you actually get a crew alive bonus the more people that are alive when you complete the mission. So uh, don't kick them, you make money off them. Drills. Don't play drills when someone has an upgraded drill. You don't gain anything. Don't do it. Because it makes their time longer. And unless it's like a drill that's far away from them and you know it's going to take them a while to get to it, don't do it. Uh, so, make sure you know the talents of the people in your group. You can generally figure it out if they have like two ammo bags, six trip mines, you know, you get the idea. Listen to Bane, especially in rats when you're trying to cook meth. I mean, if you're trying to cook meth and you're not listening to Bane, good luck. Really, good luck. Hawks uh, <clears throat> and Breakout. Bane literally says, protect the person with the server. The person with the server moves really slowly, guys. And I don't know about you, but he needs protection from cloakers. So don't run away, seriously, it's not very helpful, you know. Okay, now ECM rushing, do not run through sensors or stop answering guards pages if you're in the middle of stealth and loud, because you can buy an extra few seconds if you held that pager, unless let's say the camera's already active, but generally as soon as you take R1 off answering a pager, alarm sounding instantly. Unless you'd only lose one second by not answering the pager, and you could, like, I don't know, get the cover better, there's no reason why you shouldn't just finish answering that page for the extra 10 or 20 seconds. The longer it takes for law enforcement to revive, the better for you. ECM rushing, don't kill guards, because you have to make sure your pagers are on top of each other then, otherwise the the pages will go off that's not a good idea only kill them if it's on something like death wish where they will kill you if you do not kill them also if someone has equipment to bypass a section don't use your own if you're incompetent by this i mean let's say you're on an escape mission and someone has c4 and there's a door if they aren't using their trip mines for sensor mines or blowing uh law enforcement up let them blow the door up for you, you save a few seconds, and it's just better. Unless they don't want to, then, which is fair enough, or you have, I don't know, lockpicking ace, then you're good. Don't blow doors down in stealth as well, that's not what I mean. On train heist, another good example of general tips I could give. Don't throw shells that far, they blow up, and you lose quite a lot of cash. 
there's listing things off here, so watchdogs don't throw extra loot into the 